Okay. So here are the rails. <laughs> and here is our show. Completely off. Completely gone today. What in the world? Derailed. <laughs> Yay, you're here. Welcome to the CK and GK podcast. Let's get going. Gobble, gobble. It's Tuesday. She hits the button to start the recording and then that's what comes out of her mouth. I really wanted to make like a gobbling noise, oh, but I can't do it. We're so glad you're here. I hope that that caught you as off guard as it did me. We're starting off our episode with a bang. <laughs> <laughs> oh, goodness. Yeah. So happy yeah. Thanksgiving week. Um, welcome to ZK and GK. Your host today, uh, don't adjust your TV sets. Caitlin really is wearing jeans that fit her in college. So I did wear jeans that fit me in college, but it, it took a lot of... It took like more than a year to get there. <laughs> That's the sad thing. It doesn't matter. I would have a t-shirt printed and wear it everywhere I go. Ask me when I bought my jeans. Oh, I love that. Um, and they were a boot cut. So I was like on trend from jeans that I wore like that I got like 20 years ago. Right? Oh, goodness. Well, and she can spell out a city from Texas, six letters, just like Carol Foster Lambert did to Frank Lambert in Step by Step. D-A-L-L-A-S. Well, Frank. Anyway, Patrick (laughs) Buffy, for those of you who don't know, played Frank Lambert, but also played Bobby from Dallas. He was Bobby. (laughs) Bobby. (laughs) And she, there's like something, I think it's like the very beginning. I think it's like the first episode where... Of step by step, where Suzanne Summers says to Patrick Duffy, like he's trying to do a crossword puzzle, and he's like, "A city from Texas, six letters," and he can't think of it, and she just is like, "Well, Frank, D A L L A S," and it's like this big running joke that he lives on Dallas. So yeah, there you go. (laughs) That's Jenny. Her name is Jenny. She has long hair like Suzanne Summers. Let's move on. Oh my gosh, I would love to have hair like Suzanne Summers. She still has hair like that. Hair and thighs. Yes. Yes. I feel like everyone had a thigh master. And I remember like distinctly watching my mom like doing leg lifts on the living room floor when I was a kid. <laughs> oh, yeah. Everyone did that. All right. So should we dig Let's in? Let's do it. Okay. So the first thing we're going to talk about, like always, is uh, what's happening in the world of sports. Mm-hmm. Um, this is Thanksgiving week. And Thanksgiving is all about family, stuffing your face, and watching football. Nice. So for me, the football experience has really changed over the years because when I was in high school and then in college, the Friday after Thanksgiving was a really special day in Texas because uh, Texas A&M played the University of Texas and it was a giant rivalry game. Um, yeah. But since A&M turned their back on their uh, hundred year rivalry and moved to another conference, Thanksgiving weekend just isn't the same. No, I could see that. We're not going to think about that. Okay, so we're going to talk about what games you can watch on Thanksgiving. Um, There's two teams that historically have games on Thanksgiving, right? The Lions and the Cowboys normally play. Mm -hmm. Um, But there's going to be three different games on Thanksgiving, and all of them are relevant this year. All of them are important in what's going to happen in the playoffs. Okay? Okay. So the Bills are going to play the Lions in Detroit. And it's interesting because the game for Buffalo – uh, just got moved um, to Detroit because of the snow. Yeah, like they couldn't uh, get the players out of their houses because there was so yeah. much snow in Buffalo. Yeah. Okay, and that's going to be at eleven thirty um, Central. Um, at three o'clock Central, New York is playing the um, at Dallas uh, Cowboys game, and then I'm not going to talk much about the Cowboys because we're not Cowboys friends in our house. Um, in fact, the Packers can have a perfect season by either winning and going to the playoffs or just beating the Cowboys. And they did. So who cares that they have five losses? Mm-hmm. All right. Or maybe six. And then also the Patriots are playing the Vikings. And if you didn't see this catch from Justin Jefferson, um, he is up in the air and snags the ball with one hand while someone else is behind him trying to snag the ball as well. Anyway, 
um, look that up because that catch was pretty impressive. And and it's on a lot of replays this week because it was so interesting. So anyhow, that game is at 720 Central. So there's a game to watch while the turkey cooks. There's a game to have on the background while you're sitting at the kids table because even though you're almost 40, you still haven't graduated to the adult table, probably because <laughs> of your behavior. And then there's a game to watch while you lay there with your pants unbuttoned and eat your second round of dessert. Who is buttoning pants? Wear stretchy pants. That's the solution to that problem. Just wear stretchy <laughs> pants. That's what I do. I wear a right. big baggy shirt that looks kind of nice and then stretchy pants. Like, no, no buttoning of pants. All right. <clears throat> so I am going to, one, enjoy those football games because I always eat pie and watch the last game of the night. That's like one of the things that I do. Um, but also, I'm going to try and tackle this whole FIFA World Cup in Qatar situation. There is a lot going on right now with this. So for those of you who don't know, FIFA is the governing body over the world soccer tourney. World Cup is a huge, huge deal. It's a tournament that happens much like the Olympics, like, you know, every few years. And so you you have all of these teams from all over the world coming together to play each other and ultimately you have a world cup champion so i'm gonna give some background on this situation and it's it's a little in depth um and i have a bunch of resources on our blog post for the week if this is interesting to you and you want to know more about what's going on so okay so this is supposed to be an exciting time in soccer right now because of the world cup but yeah (laughs) i have to just start from the very beginning so recently um former fifa president set blatter said Quote, Qatar is a mistake. It was a bad choice. And I was responsible for that. And he's not wrong. Um, And here's why. So for some background, in 2009, Qatar put in a bid to host the World Cup. It hoped to be the first Arab country to do so. It was up against Australia, Japan, South Korea, and the United States. At the time, Qatar did not have the infrastructure in place to host this many football games, you need tons of stadiums and they just didn't have it. Um, And if you think about where Qatar is in the world, it is hot there. It just didn't make a ton of sense to do this. Um, That said, there are other issues that are probably more important. Qatar has policies against alcohol, which is not necessarily so much a problem as like a, huh? Because there's people coming from all over the world to see these matches, and typically they want to have alcohol as they are at these games, right? Oh, um, I I thought that soccer fans were pretty mild and well behaved and don't drink much. No, that is not (laughs) necessary. Some of them are, but generally speaking, soccer crowds are crazy, right? So that is like, and that's a religious thing. That's not so much like a like that's not okay. That's so much. That's just kind of like. Uh, okay but there's people coming from all over the world so it's like a historically dry like nation right so there's that thing but they also have policies against homosexuality they don't recognize israel's sovereignty and all of those things combined the infrastructure the weather the policies all of that is kind of like okay that's a long shot to get this bid to host the world cup and yet they won the bid right so all right Um, there are a lot of reasons why that could have happened. There's a whole thing about corruption in FIFA that you should be looking into if this is interesting to you. Um, I'm not going to get into that piece of it, but I do have resources if you want. Now, granted, Qatar made some concessions in order to be able to host, but overall, this country has a terrible record on human rights. And just as evidence of that, more than six and a half thousand Migrant workers have died under the labor conditions that have existed in order to build the stadiums and rest it, the rest of the infrastructure of the tournament. So I would not even call them workers. I would call them enslaved people. It feels because like that. many of them were not paid. They're not paid. It, it, some of them have like more than seven months worth of back wages. It's completely ridiculous. Some of this, like these deaths have come to work, um, come to light, excuse me, since 2013, but there's more. So um, it, it hasn't stopped. Like we've just known about it since 2013, which was four years after they won the bid and a few years after 
they had started putting the infrastructure in place in order to make it happen, right? So even as recently as August of this year, many migrant workers were arrested or deported when they protested against the unpaid wages. So this is still going on. Right. Also, like homosexuality is still illegal. There's tons of people within the LGBTQIA plus community who are physically abused and sexually harassed while they're in police custody in Qatar. And that's clearly a problem, right? In addition to that, there's uh, the issue of women's rights. Um, Qatar is a patriarchal nation. Again, this is a religious thing, but also a lot of women are not okay with the situation that they're in. I am fine if women need men's permission to make many of their life's important decisions and some basic decisions like whether or not to take a taxi. Um, If they subscribe to that policy, if they're okay with that. But in this situation, many of them are not. And so this is a suppression of women's rights that's happening there. Um, So again, Jenny and I stand in support of women living their lives as they choose. And it sounds like they're not able to do that in this nation. So this is a problem. Okay. Have you seen the images of the facilities that they've built? I have seen some of those images. I haven't seen tons of them because I'm For a soccer fan, looking at all this and coming to terms with all of it is very difficult for me right now. I'm having a hard time kind of going into it. Have you seen something that's interesting? So um, some of the hotels are made of shipping containers. Mm -hmm. Uh, This is like Sochi level issues. Mm -hmm. They have printed the facade of buildings on canvases and hung them up up, to make it look like there are buildings and towns. Mm -hmm. Yeah. In a town, a space that they're trying to advertise as, oh, here's our town square. Um, These are places where tourists can go. They are taking pictures of AstroTurf in front of a canvas facade and calling this one of the locations that visitors might enjoy. Yeah, no, it's not. It's not good. It's not great. We've got all of that happening. In response to what's going on with Qatar and, and FIFA and World Cup. Many in soccer are pledging to wear the One Love rainbow armband while they compete. And several of them are calling attention to other human rights abuses. Um, Amnesty International proposed that FIFA actually pay reparations to migrant workers, uh, which would, is roughly $440 million, which is the actual amount of the prize pot uh, for the tournament. Wow. Yeah. FIFA has said they're open to it, but it's FIFA, so... Like, don't hold your breath. (laughs) Um, If you are interested in signing a petition to help get compensation for these migrant workers, I have it linked uh, in the blog post for this episode. And I'll make sure that it's a very obvious link at the top of the page. Qatar, in response, is reportedly paying fans to attend the World Cup, which is insane. Like, this is the biggest soccer tournament in the world and you're paying people to come in like that's completely nuts if the fans take the offer they have to sign a contract to sing the support songs and chant the support chants and they have to speak positively of qatar and then anyone who is not speaking positively of qatar they have to report them which means that those people are going to get arrested and that's a whole other problem right so right and fifa in an effort to try and stop the bad PR, which is, of course, not going to work, um, is literally telling teams and players to, like, stay in their lanes. They're saying things like, you need to focus on football, soccer, right? And keep politics and, you know, basic human rights out of sports. Because if we get involved in all of these things, then it doesn't really become about the sport anymore. But it's like, these are people who are representing a nation and going and playing a soccer tournament. Like... FIFA needs to be quiet, and this whole thing with the, with Qatar is is very very scary. Um, anyway, so that was a lot of information, but essentially World Cup is underway, and we're going to see what happens uh, with these countries as they play for um, this tournament and see what happens with players and and go from there. But um, I have to give a shout out to the Gist newsletter for their completely amazing, excellent breakdown of what's happening. Um, you can subscribe with the link that I'm going to put in the blog post. There's also a World Cup cheat sheet um, that is super helpful that you can find on Instagram, but I'll also put a link to that in our blog post for the week. And um, there's a few other recommendations that 
that just has offered if you want to learn more about what's going on. There's a, I read this cartoon yesterday. It's amazing. Cartoonist David Squires covered the story of Kenyan migrant worker Malcolm Badali. And that's for The Guardian. And um, it's a it's a cartoon, but make no mistake, it's not funny. Like, it's him just putting in pictures what happened to this migrant worker. You can listen to a different podcast called World Corrupt, which is the story of corruption um, and all the other mess that went into Qatar's bid to win the, and host the World Cup. Um, and on ESPN Plus, if you have that option, um, there's a documentary called Qatar's World Cup, which is about the human rights abuses and families of those who died building the stadiums. Uh, the trailer is emotional and powerful, and you can watch that on our uh, page as well on our blog post for this episode. Um, I have not seen the whole documentary yet. I'm a little worried it's going to make me depressed because I love soccer so much that I'm like really bummed about this, but I feel like it's just important to know. So all of that Qatar World Cup stuff, it's a lot, it's heavy, and it's important. So highly recommend looking into those resources there. So I will tell you that I have not been a soccer fan and not against soccer. It's just not a sport that interests me at this time. Very American. It's not a big deal. (laughs) Right, right. But I am learning more and more about this whole thing. Yeah. And realizing that this organization really needs to check itself. Like, For this sure. is not the first FIFA issue that no. we have seen. Right. And six and a half thousand people dead. That's just what we've documented. Right. That's just documented. Work. Yeah, exactly. And like, if we are going to talk about like how awful this is, like, there's a lot going on here. Mm-hmm. And I don't know what the answer is besides we don't award bids to countries who have these kinds of issues. We saw this with the Olympics in China. In Sochi, yeah. It's the and, same and thing. In China. Yeah, you're right. We did. And it's hard because you don't want to say no to the first Arab nation hosting a World Cup. Like that's really, really important, right? That's a big deal. At the same time, the corruption involved here is is pretty it's pretty bad. They're, the only way for them to have gotten this bid based on what we're seeing with all of this evidence coming out is through some sort of corruption. Um, and, and that's really unfortunate. And it's 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 a bad look for FIFA. I appreciate the, the players who are stuck between a rock and a hard place. Right. You either play for your team and, and play for your nation or you don't in protest. And and that must be really difficult to try and make that choice. Absolutely. Yeah. And they did not spend their lives working as an athlete to make it to this premier level to have to be faced with, okay, well, is me playing a human rights violation? Like that's, that's not something you consider when you're 17 years old and working out and hoping that you're going to make a professional team one day. Yeah, you just made a good point because I'm thinking about this. This is 2009 when they put this bid in place and it's now 2022. You know, this is 13 years ago. Like they they were kids. Like it wasn't their responsibility to do that. This was on FIFA to make that choice. And that's why Seth uh, Blatter said, like, we made a mistake. It's like, yeah, you absolutely made a mistake. But it's too late now because there's six and a half thousand people who are dead. So it's just, it's again, this is a heavy topic. and, And sometimes we do tackle heavy topics. And I appreciate you listening to that. But this matters. All right. Thank you. Let's lighten things up. Please. Let's talk about what we're obsessed about. Okay. My current obsession is Coats for Kids. Oh, I love that. Yeah. The Austin Coats for Kids drive is the second largest coat drive in the country, second behind only Boston, which, you know, it's cold there, so I'm not surprised it's a bigger coat drive. Um, But this year, the Austin Coats for Kids program will give away their millionth coat. Really? How exciting. Congratulations. It's amazing. Yeah, it's pretty exciting. And so um, I have included a link so that if you are in the Austin area, you can donate gently used or new coats. Check out your local schools. Um, Maybe your company Mm -hmm. is hosting a coat drive. But also you can drop them off at any Jack Brown Cleaners. Because Jack Brown does clean all of the coats before we uh, donate them to someone in need. There's also on this link a chance for you to donate financially if you're not in the Austin area. $20 buys a brand new coat. Because Coats for Kids serves children of all ages, adult coats are really needed. So don't just worry about the baby coats 
or coats that your kids no longer fit in, but also your own, go through your closet. And rather than selling it on Facebook for $5, donate it and know that a kid's going to go to school when it's cold because now they have a coat to wear and walk in the cold weather. Yeah, donating adult coats is, I mean, for me, an adult coat almost fits my child. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, I'll have to look through my closet and see because I always am like, oh yeah, I'm going to do this. And then I never think about it again. So I'm I'm going to also post this link like out on our, um, on our social media for the week, but this, this link will also be in the blog post. So I'll make a portion of um, our blog post for the week, have all these links up right at the top. So you can just find them right away. That's awesome. Awesome. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. The Washington post um, did a study a few years ago about how the temperature and the weather actually affects student attendance. Mm. And we're not talking about like school is closed for a snow day. Right. There's an actual correlation to the temperature dropping below 50 degrees and students being absent from school because they do not have weather appropriate clothing and cannot stand and wait for a bus or walk to school when it is too cold or too wet or too snowy. By providing a coat you are also providing more education days. That's really important. I love that. And I actually saw that quite a bit with my previous job. I had a lot of kids who rode the bus or walked. And if it was cold, you knew attendance was going to be down. So that's a big deal. All right. Well, um, I am traveling back in time to seventh grade when claw clips, claw clips, those thingies that you hold your hair in, were big. And I had the one, like, I have so much hair. I had the big ones that were like super long that would curve around my head because I had that much hair that I just couldn't hold that that much in a clip. Like I had to have the really big ones. Um, Oh my gosh. So I can put all my hair in one butterfly clip. Yeah. You have like baby clips and they hold all your, I I have no, I I can't (laughs) do that. That holds like (laughs) none of my hair. I use those to like hold the baby hairs that fall out of my ponytail in the back, like on the back of my head. And they don't even, and I usually need like two just to hold them. That's funny. Yeah. I had hated those because they didn't hold my hair, um, but they're back and I wear them all the time. And now, and I watched one video. I started out watching one video of how this girl has tons and tons and tons of hair, like long, thick hair. And she manages to somehow not only fit all of her hair into one like normal sized claw clip, but also she manages to get her hair into a claw clip with a baseball hat on. And I was like, wow. I'm sorry. Right. And it looked adorable. Where is the clip? It's like, you know, like the back where your hair kind of comes through the open part of the clip, like the adjustable part. There's that hole back there. Right, 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 right. right. Where the yeah, she has it coming is. through there and it okay. looked adorable. She had a hat on. It was like a trucker hat. And then she had her hair in. Yeah. Anyway, it was adorable. Wow. So, yeah. Um. So I've learned a couple of things. One, all of those super cute claw clip hairstyles that you see on Instagram, every one of those girls is cheating. Every single one. They all have those clear, like, headband oh, yeah. things. All of them. Those clear ponytail holders. They're all using it. And I'm like, oh, my gosh. I never. It never even occurred to me to use one of those when I did that. Because for me, the point of using a claw clip is that I don't like dent my hair, right? So I can wear it right, right. for another day. <laughs> but like, it's a really good idea. So they're all cheating. The other thing that made me laugh about this is that I watched one of those reels on our podcast Instagram feed. Mm-hmm. And now our entire podcast <laughs> reel feed is like girls putting their hair in claw clips and also painting their fingernails. <laughs> <laughs> It's all (laughs) nail tutorials and then claw clip tutorials. That's hilarious. That is so funny. Have completely. (laughs) I have trained the algorithm to think that now that's the only thing our podcast cares about. It's amazing. It's amazing what will show up once you click on something, right? One, I watched one of them in full. Like what was, and I think I just got mixed up between like my personal and our show and that's how this ended up happening. But right. the algorithm is smarter than I am. So, and I work We're... in social media. So <laughs> I should know. Right. Okay. So everyone's favorite part, the gem of the week. I had another one queued up, but something happened yesterday that must be reported. 
Okay, let's hear it. I took my son to breakfast with Santa. Kid has never met Santa before. Okay. Right? We have been COVID cautious for so long right. that this was the first time that he got to meet Santa. And he has seen that Santa, but he has not sat on his lap and talked to him at all. Right. I said to him in preparation, Santa might ask you what you want for Christmas. Right. Have you thought about what you would like to ask him for? And Kit thinks. You can see the wheels turning in his mind. And thank goodness for streaming TV. We don't watch that many commercials, right? So he's not that exposed to products um, that are marketed to children. He looks at me and says, a second bedroom. (laughs) I said, okay. um, I don't don't know that Santa can bring an addition to our house. Right. What would you do with a second bedroom? Oh, well, I would not put a bed. I would just have lots of pillows and blankets. Oh, So he just wants a big cuddle closet. Okay. I was thinking more of like a place for like a straight jacket. Like this is like my, (laughs) (laughs) this is my, this is my padded room, my padded room where I, (laughs) but I like his idea better. And a a comfy closet sounds way better than padded room. (laughs) A second bedroom is what he would like. So no, that's some good thinking right there. Yep. Second bedroom. Yep. Well, my gem of the week also has to do with your children. Oh my goodness. This is hilarious. When okay. Happens. So oh, for those of you who don't know, Jenny and I have spent enough time around each other that Jenny's older child, Abby, who is the sassiest <laughs> preteen <laughs> and one of my favorite children in the whole wide world. It, she's just, she's an amazing kid. Well, Jenny and I regularly text each other, of course. We regularly see each other, of course. And I feel like Abby knows at this point that if something were to happen, I am a person that she can go to should she need anything, right? Like if something is wrong, she knows she can come to me. Okay. So (laughs) the other day, I am fully ready for bed, like face washed, hair a mess, probably up in some sort of claw clip that's like hanging off my head. Uh, Child is in bed, like fuzzy socks, all the frumpy things, the works, right? And I get a message from Jenny and it says, quote, taking mama home, it's Abby texting and she messed up. And I have to read this message three or four times. Okay, so Abby's texting me that she's taking her own mother home because her mom messed up. <laughs> what is happening? Like, I am running through all of these things and I'm trying to stay calm, right? Because, like, it's coming from Abby. I don't know what's wrong. Like, I'm just sort of in panic mode, but I'm also like, this could be nothing. So I'm like, if I start to panic now, I will lose my mind, right? Right. So Bryce, like, this is the message I just got. And he's like, wait what's wrong? Like, so Bryce starts to kind of percolate over this too. And I'm just like, nope, mm -mm, it's probably okay. I'm just going to stay calm. But at the same time, I'm going, where are my keys? Like, (laughs) where's my wallet? Like, do I, how do I my driver's license over here? Like, where are these people? What do I need to do? Right. Why is Abby texting me in all this time that I've known her? She has never texted me from her mom's phone. This is scary. Why does she have her mom's phone? Like, what's happening? So it was like maybe three minutes at the most of me panicking. And I think I messaged back, like, is everything okay? Do you, what do I need to do? Like, how can I, you know, something like a lot of lines of how can I help or what's going on? And then you messaged me back (laughs) with, she texted the wrong person. She's supposed to be texting John. We're taking my mother back home. And I was like, oh my God. Yes. So we had gone to an evening event and we were in two cars and my mom had driven to our house and was going to drive home from our house. Um, But it was dark and there's a lot of deer between our house and theirs. Yeah. Like the road gets dark and wildernessy. Yeah. And I said, why don't I just drive you home and you can come back and get your car another time. And so I said to Abby, go ahead and text Johnny, let him know that we are taking May May home and we will be home after that so that he doesn't worry that we're not home when he gets home. Right. So 
she texts May May and it autocorrects to Mama. Mm-hmm. And then after you text her back, oh my goodness, what can I do? Abby says, oh, I texted Caitlin instead of Johnny. <laughs> And I said, well, text her back and say, it's Abby. I messed up. So then she texts, it's Abby texting and she's messed up. It's like, who is she? <laughs> and so at this point, I'm I'm just looking at this thread thinking, poor Caitlin is probably in a hizzy, like trying to figure out what is wrong with me. How am I so messed up that Abby is texting me, uh, taking me home and feels the need to text you about it? Yeah. And I mean, again, the message is taking mama home. It's Abby texting and she messed up. So I'm like, uh, okay. Like, it, what does I did mean? somehow manage to stay seated on the couch because my first instinct <laughs> was to get up and like start getting shoes and get, you know, like doing all the things. Right. And I just was like, I'm just going to stay seated until I really know all the information. And then, you know, Bryce brings up a point of like, what if we're not going to find out because something that happened? <laughs> and I'm oh like, no. that's a good point. But I still, I'm still seen it on the couch. It's still okay. It's still fine. It will all be fine. But, and it was, it was just like, she scared me half to death. Like, I really was like, oh my God, like, what am I going to have? Like, does she need to come stay at our house? Like, I have to go make up the guest room. Like all these things. <laughs> Oh, man. So, yeah, that was your child giving me my gem yep. this week. Amazing. They're always good for it. Your beautiful, clever daughter giving me yes. a panic attack. A small heart attack. Right. Yes. All right. Well, as we move into the meat for today, the real talk, um, I just want to say I don't like Black Friday. I don't like Black Friday. I don't like Black Thursday. I don't like shopping on Thanksgiving. I don't like shopping on Thanksgiving Friday. I think the whole thing is terrible. I don't think that retail workers should have to work on Thanksgiving so that I can get a KitchenAid mixer for half off. And I don't think that people deserve to be trampled because somebody got a TV for $1,000 off. I actually choose not to spend any money in brick and mortar stores on Thanksgiving or the Friday after. Unless I am buying gas. Yeah. I feel similarly. And this is coming from someone who has worked retail. Like both of us. Oh, I have as well. Yeah. I have as well. But this is like, it's so crazy. People die because Mm -hmm. they want to get a stereo. Right. 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 And it's, it's completely ludicrous. So this is no judgment on people who do choose to shop on Thanksgiving well, maybe a little bit on Thanksgiving Day, but, <laughs> yeah. but on Black Friday, like no judgment there. Like you do you, and it's probably something that you do with your family, and it's a good it's a good time, and it's a way to spend time together and and knock out some of those gifts right away. So I understand that. My ask is that if we can all just be kind to the people around us, shoppers and workers, um, it's mm-hmm. going to be a tough holiday season, especially for lots of stores, as it is difficult to find workers. And so the workers who are there are stretched really thin. So I'm just going to ask that we all, um, in the spirit of the holidays, just like be kind to each other yeah. as you choose to go shopping. Um, and with while that said, Thanksgiving is a holiday, so yes. workers are eligible for time and a half, the Friday after Thanksgiving is not a holiday. No, it's not. Mm-hmm. So it they're not. working for normal pay and they probably don't have the option of asking off. No. And when I did it, I was, I worked on Christmas Eve and the way that it worked was I went into the, the store that I was working in. It was one of those very popular, uh, early two thousands fashion stores marketed towards mostly white people. One of those stores. Um, and Mm. I had to go in and build walls for after Christmas sales that were going to be happening. Because you have to change the display because once Christmas is over, the display has to be changed immediately. So we went right. in on December 23rd at like 8 o'clock at night and we stayed at work from like 8 o'clock at night all the way through to like 4.30 or 5.30 in the morning on Christmas Eve morning. That's nuts. And that way we had the, all the displays done so that the day after Christmas, because it was closed, it was going to be open for Christmas Eve, right? Because, of course, mm-hmm. it had to be open for Christmas Eve for those last minute shoppers. 
but it closed at like three or something. And I didn't have to work that. Cause I was like, I'm not, I'd rather work the night before and then not have to go in on Christmas Eve and then have to like race from there, there to my family celebration at three o'clock in the afternoon. So then, right. Yeah, I did that. And then it was closed on Christmas day, but then bright and early day after Christmas, we, we had to be in. So just, just be nice. It sucks to work retail in the holidays and it's three times harder for the same pay and it's just not great. So just again, be nice. That said, we are talking about gifts because we know that right after the turkey is being digested and you have pie in front of your face, if you have the football game on, great. If not, you're probably going to be looking at some sales. So that's what we're talking about is holiday shopping. Um, And we have some gift ideas for a bunch of different people in your life. And they're at all different price points. So we've got um, kids, parents, co-workers, um, your best friend, and a couple of other people on here, and every th- and your partner, of course, um, and uh, anything from like less than twenty bucks to like if you want to spend the big bucks. Here we go. Yeah, right. And remember, I said I don't spend money on brick and mortar. That doesn't mean I don't get on my phone and like start ordering right. stuff. <laughs> right. Okay? Me too. I'm not saying I'm not spending any money. Okay. Right. I am definitely helping out the economy. <laughs> I'm just not doing it in a store. Right. That's me too. Okay. And I'm trying to get it done because, right. all right, let's do this. Um, should we start with children? Let's do that. All right. So I've okay. got some ideas for kids here. I'm starting with less than 20 bucks. So here's just so you know, here's our price ranges here. We've got less than 20, like somewhere 21 to 50, 50 to 100, um, 100 ish, like, you know, give or take. And then a splurge gift is the way that I okay. kind of thought of this. So I like it for kids. Um, I found this book called A Year of Forest School. Uh, it was by Jane Worrell and Peter Houghton. And it's it's a book that's filled with games and crafts and activities that get people outside and excited to be in nature. Um, so you can like take them on a walk and you bring this book along and you have something to do while you're on your walk. Oh my gosh, that sounds cute. so fun. Yeah. Um, I also, in the $21 to $50 range, I found a uh, Smithsonian Jurassic World Dominion prehistoric projector. Oh my gosh. So this is like a, <laughs> it basically projects like Jurassic World dinosaurs <laughs> oh my onto gosh, your, amazing. Uh, yeah, uh, onto your kid's room walls. And there's like 35 different dinosaurs. And if your kid likes dinosaurs the way my kid likes dinosaurs, especially Jurassic World dinosaurs, that might be a good one for you. So my parents gave Abigail a Smithsonian projector for space. Cool. And she set it up in her closet and made this like whole space tour game that like you could get on her spaceship and go on a tour of the universe. And she's telling us all these facts about these different um, celestial objects using the projector. That's so cool. It feels like that's like setting up your own planetarium. Right. You know, oh, I love that. That's a great one. Um, square goals. Okay. So you've seen like magnetiles. Yeah. This yes. is kind of like magnetiles. So um, these kids can build like 3d structures but they um they have like racetracks and and marble ramps and um there's also some of the panels inside the the square goal shapes are like um paperboard so Mm. that you can draw on them so that's fun yeah so it's like combining the drawing piece and the magnetile piece and they can they can be really creative with it so i thought that was a really really cool one Um, You know, the number one predictor of success in engineering is uh, spatial reasoning, whether or not you master um, the be able to think and see in 3D. Mm -hmm. Um, And I'm doing a huge research project on it right now um, in my job. And this sounds like the kind of toy that kids could be playing with to increase their spatial reasoning. Right. Yeah. I I mean, I think that anytime you can like give kids something that is going to have them be creative is always going to be a good thing but I love the idea of combining that artistic piece with this one as well so I love that do you want to do the next one all right so um this is kind of a lot right for a kid's gift but it is one of the classics I think it's amazing I have given it to multiple children um the Melissa and Doug shopping cart 
Okay. Um, there is a personalized vi- uh, version. Of course. Um, but there's also um, just a generic shopping cart. But it is a real metal working shopping cart. That's okay. Cool. It is not like, yeah, there's plastic ones out there that, you know, once it goes down the stairs once, it's broken or um, it's not great quality. This is a real shopping cart. Real wheels is perfect for your little helper. Um, and if you're so inclined, it can go with you when you go shopping. We have one in our family that has been through multiple kids and it's still in great shape. That's awesome. I love that idea. I think, I mean, kids love to play store. Like right now I'm just thinking about Bluey and like all the times that she plays shopkeeper. <laughs> right. That's so cute. So here's our, my splurge recommendation. <laughs> this is relatively new, but um, this is the Lego Home Alone house. Okay. Did y'all finish it? We finished it. It <laughs> it does take a while to assemble. I think all in the amount of time spent on it was probably somewhere between like nine to 12 hours. Not obviously all at once, but like just right. we broke it up into pieces. But that's like fun of the Lego too, oh, right? Like yeah. is building. Oh, yeah. Is building it, right? Like it's a, for me, it's, it's a project, right? And we've talked about the ADHD urge to do projects. Like that's what Legos do for me. Um, Legos are also good for spatial reasoning. They just are. Saying. They are. Even if you're like, well, it has the instructions. How is that good for spatial reasoning? Because you have to actually interpret the instructions and figure out how they go. Like those instructions are not always easy. And anyone who right. builds Legos knows what I'm talking about. It is as awesome as you think it is going to be. Okay. You can, <laughs> I'm not even kidding. It has multiple, it opens up like a dollhouse. You can open up like the attic and the attic has like his battle plans on it. Remember the thing, the sheet of paper that he rolled yes, out? Yes, 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 yes. Okay. There is a refrigerator that opens. There is a TV that has the famous movie on there. The angels of filthy souls. Like the guy from that is on it. There is a frozen okay, please box make of macaroni. a video tour of this. Oh house my gosh, I should and do post that. it. I should. There is a working furnace in the bottom where you push, you open up the furnace and it lights up. I'm not oh even kidding. Oh my god! There is a tree house with a line that attaches from the back of the house to the tree house, and the scissors are hanging on. Uh uh-uh. uh It it is. It is so detailed. You get a mom, you get Harry and Marv and a van. Marv has the iron on his face. <laughs> oh my gosh. Um, you get and, and Harry has the gold tooth, right? Um, mm-hmm. you get a Kevin who with a scarf, you get a sled, and the sled <gasps> will like go down the stairs. It is it oh, and the best part, the coolest part. It you know the party scene where he has the cutout of Michael Jordan. Right, on right, the train. right, right. Yes. There is a train track that you can turn and there's like a cutout of Michael Jordan that goes around oh, and around and around on a train. Goodness. It is so cool. It is your splurge gift if you're going to do it, but it is awesome. And we, so we put it together and Bryce's aunt, and you had this idea too. We're going to get one of those big plastic tubs and then just put it right, on right, the right. big plastic tub and then cover it so that, and then we can store it for the season. But it is very yeah, we cool. We talked about this last week. Yeah. I'm, I'm so excited. Very I can't believe cool. that we went from your, you got it to it's built. It's built. In a week. Yeah. Oh yeah. It was, it's fun. So that's our splurge gift recommendation for kids. Um, and it's good for fam- for the whole family because everyone's going to need a little help. <laughs> All right, crazy. let's move on to that's talk awesome. about parents, your parents, as in the person who's listening, right. your parents. Right now, if you have grandchildren for your parents, mm-hmm. you got to milk that, mm-hmm. right? You sure Crafts, do. homemade items by your kids. Like the grandparents eat that up. They love it. Um, also photo gifts, right? My mom uh, says she has coffee every morning with her children or grandchildren. And it's because she has a mug that has everyone's pictures on it. And she washes and uses that mug every morning. That's so cute. Yeah. And come on, ordering a mug on Shutterfly. It's like, yeah, you can probably get a coupon code that's going to really take care of the pricing on that too. (laughs) Put Shutterfly on your phone. P.S. Put the app on your phone. That's a good idea. So those are the inexpensive gifts for parents. Yeah. I have mm-hmm. one for, um, it's a little like the 50 to a hundred dollar range. If your parents okay. like to cook, like my, my dad loves to cook and he's good at it. So there's that. But, and I say that with people who are like, don't have a ton and a ton of gadgets in their home. Right. Like I like to do the actual prep work where I'm not just using a gadget to do everything for me. So 
Um, this is the Oxford Chef 8 inch chef's knife. Um, it's a Japanese knife that has it's made of really good steel and it's really lightweight so um it it doesn't really like rust or anything like that um but it's a good knife and all chefs will tell you that you need a good knife if you're going to be right in the kitchen so that's a good one and a good knife is such a great gift because it's the kind of thing that we don't normally buy for ourselves Right. Um, You're like, no, and, these ones are fine. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> not, I'll get so. this set of knives that cost what really one knife should cost. Right. And it's fine. No, um, the the nice knives that we own were gifts to us because yeah, it's us not too. the kind of thing that we would buy for ourselves. Right, us too. In that same vein, I am suggesting quality cookware. Mm. For about $100, you can get a set of two square baking dishes from Le Creuset. And, you know, they're really famous for their uh, porcelain cast iron. Um, and like Dutch and if, uh, yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. And so those those are those are double $100 or yes, triple. They are. Yeah, they're expensive. But um, these dishes that I suggested, um, they are stoneware. Um, they're good for prep work like breading or marinating meats, but they also can go in the oven. Um, and they come in so many different colors. And because they are this soft stoneware um, with a glaze, they're almost nonstick, y'all. Like, they clean up oh, so yeah, easily. Nice. And yeah. maybe you uh, break the set of two up and give them to two different people. There you go. Just saying. <laughs> it's a twofer. Okay. Yeah. Right. Now, the splurge group gift, I'm going to give this with somebody else. Um, I gave this to my parents a few years ago and... Um, it's killer. It's awesome. They love it. Okay. They use it all the time. It is the Victrola 8-in-1 stereo. And by 8-in-1, I mean, if there is a way for music to be recorded, it plays it. Wow. 8-track? So, eight, I don't know if it does 8-track. <laughs> but it plays, it I just plays, threw a wrench in there. Right, right, right. It plays CDs. It plays cassettes. It plays vinyl. It um, connects to your phone. It's got a radio um, and it's got an auxiliary port. So I guess if you had an eight track player yeah. with an auxiliary out, I don't know. I don't know how that works. <laughs> and it all fits with the speakers, right? You don't have to, you're not pu plugging it into amplification. It, no, does, it has speakers nice. in it and it all fits in one box. It's um, the, the piece of furniture it's, or the, you know, the unit itself is about the size of a computer tower. Okay. That's yeah. pretty cool. It's very cool. Um, and so my parents use it. Um, they always have music playing in their house, but anytime they leave, they don't want the dogs to be lonely. So right. they turn on the radio for the dogs. Yeah. And so this is just in their hallway on a table. It's not that big. And they can just turn it on when they leave the house. I love that. That's a great idea. Especially for, if yeah. you have like a musically inclined person who doesn't necessarily right. have the best way to play it. Yeah, I love that. Or they have tons um, of different ways to do it. That's great. Right. And because it's one unit, um, it's not something that necessarily is going to be how they amplify their TV or um, what right. you want to listen to when you're putting on a movie or whatever. Like this is this is just for music. Um, and it's uh, antique looking. It's got the wood on the front, and it looks like an old Victrola. That's nice. I like that idea. So those are some for parents. I'm going to go into your kids' teachers. We have talked about and this. If you, if, I was just going to say. Yeah. If you we've need, played this episode twice. <laughs> yes. If you need to, go back. It's early in our catalog. It might even be our like very first episode where we talk about gifts for kids' teachers. Like There's tons of gift ideas there. Do that. That said... Um, I have a couple of actual like things that are not gift cards. <laughs> gift cards are always great. That said, um, I do have a couple of actual suggestions. So one of them is the Muji gel ink ballpoint pen set. Um, every single teacher on this earth, I don't care how they identify. They hate, if they identify as teacher, they love good pens. There's not a single one Absolutely. who doesn't love a good pen. Um, these ones don't smudge. They don't bleed. Um, and I love this because the brand sells refills. So all you have to do is like buy refill ink and then you unscrew the back and put it in the pen. So you're like helping with waste and, um, you, you know, Everyone also, like, in a pen set, you always have, like, this one that you love the most that you wear out the fastest. Right, right, so, right, right, right. So there's that. So that's what I liked about this one. 
<clears throat> on the higher end, like the $21 to $50 range. We've said in the past, no mugs ever. But there are some mugs that you can do that that are the exception. Oh, a travel coffee mug or like a insulated tumbler. Like that's not a mug in my mind, right? Right. Totally agree. Totally agree. So this one is um, a rifle paper company. If you know who rifle paper are, it's like they have do like really pretty flower designs a lot of the time. Mm -hmm. And Corksicle came together to make a coffee mug. So it's a super pretty flower pattern. It's got a shatterproof lid on it and it's triple insulated. So it's a really nice mug that looks pretty and a teacher will actually use it. So you could put the ink pens in that mug and give that as a Christmas gift. That would be totally appropriate. There you go. Yeah. I love it. Anything higher than like than 50 bucks for a teacher is completely unexpected, completely unnecessary. None of no teacher is ever expecting that at all or would like would feel a lot of them would feel guilty getting something like that. Not to say <laughs> that you shouldn't, but we don't have suggestions for higher price ranges because like you're not made of money either. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So there you go. And I will tell you as a teacher, I also loved getting a poinsettia from my family, uh, from my students. Um, oh, that's nice. You have to be careful about that because um, they are poisonous to pets. Right. But um, I, I just put it where my dogs can't get to it. Um, but, you know, that's an inexpensive gift. They're everywhere these days. And, you know, for seven or eight bucks, you can pick up a small yeah. one. And it's a fun thing to give that kind of uh, perks up their house over the holidays. One year, someone um, had a small cinnamon broom that got put into my Christmas gift. And I didn't know, like, if you don't if you don't live in Texas, you might not know what a cinnamon broom is. I had never heard of this in my whole life um, until I moved <laughs> down here. But it's essentially like a like wooden broom covered in cinnamon. <laughs> Right. And they smell oh, really is. good. Like the whole point is that you just like have it in your house and it makes your house smell good. Right. So right. I got one of those. Our time's like by a... the front door and we just replace it every so often. Right. Exactly. And it's it smells great. Like that was put into a little gift that I had. That was a it was a cute idea. Same thing without the points that like I have cats and they there's no place in a house where a cat won't go to get a point set. So right. Don't do that for people who have cats. But something like that is is fun. What about coworkers? Do you, I mean, coworkers are tough because there's usually a price cap, right? Like, right. Or it's like a white elephant kind of gift. So we went, I went super general on these. I found a Bluetooth speaker that has a Smart. good battery life and it's less than 20 bucks and it's got a hundred feet of Bluetooth range. So it's also got a really good waterproof rating. So it could be like their in shower, like speaker. So that's a great one. I don't know right, about right. in shower, but like nearby the shower and mm -hmm. there's also um you can get them for a little bit higher price range 21 to 50 bucks there's a coffee mug warmer so it's one of those things that you like plug into your computer and it will keep your coffee warm for you um at your desk so those those are my two coworker ideas you could use those for teachers too if you wanted to like those absolutely are, yeah interchangeable um, if you are doing a gift exchange where you do not know for whom you are purchasing and it's mm -hmm. going to be one of these um what do they call it on office? Uh, Yankee, Yankee swap. swap. Yeah. Right, right, right. Um, I like to do a pashmina, um, oh. depending on where you buy them. They can, uh, normally between 10 and $20 in a solid neutral color. Because even if it's not something that the receiver is going to wear, it's very easy for them to re-gift. That's a good idea. Yeah. And if it's different than, you know, the candle. Yeah. Yeah, if you work in a uh, an office that's kind of guy heavy, like just keep that in mind. Maybe you label it and say like this is ideal for a person who identifies as female if they want that. Okay, what about your spouse? Because I was talking, I actually okay. mentioned this. <laughs> I mentioned this on our Instagram story the other day, and um, our fan Crystal answered back with, "This is so true." Um, all of these lists that are like, what to get your guy for Christmas. It's all like some, it's like a beard oil. 
right, 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 beard right, right. oil, one of Whiskey those stones. Yeah, exactly. Or and she goes, don't forget something leather. Like there has to be something leather. Right. Yeah. <laughs> like some sort of leather dog kit that's super fancy or, you know, like an overnight bag that has his initials on it, which like those are all great ideas. But at some but point, you can only like, give it once. Right. Exactly. My husband's leather toe that I gave him with his like monogram on it. It's I quality. Get another so one. it's holding up. Right. right. Exactly. OK, so, so I will partner. tell you that this was kind of a challenge for me because John and I don't normally give each other Christmas presents really? the way that many people do. Interesting. Most okay. of the time, what we do is choose an experience that we're going to give each other for Christmas, whether it's like we're buying tickets to this event or, hey, we're going to take this trip. But like we just call that Christmas. Now, John and I both have birthdays within Christmas time. His is two days after minus two weeks after. Yeah. So we normally lump those together and say, OK, we're going to get this. So I really thought about this. I think for the lowest price range, you might actually, instead of spending $20, you might consider spending $0 and create a custom coupon book, um, really thinking about your partner and what they hate yeah, <laughs> and maybe take go. those things off their plate every yeah. once in a while. That's a great idea. Um, or maybe this is something that if you have children, you team up with the kids and you build together and say, mm-hmm. okay, we're going to give you dad's day off or mom's manicure or whatever it is. And work with your kids so that it's a partnership. Yeah, I like that idea. For our next price bracket, you can adopt an endangered species from the World Wildlife Federation. And um, they have different price points. And they have tons of different organisms. Um, And depending on how much you spend on the adoption, you get like a little stuffed animal of that organism. You get a book about them. You get to learn about how your money is going to help uh, prevent their extinction. Um, And it's a really fun kind of outside the box deal. Um, And again, if you have children, it's fun modeling showing, hey, I am giving you the gift of charity. Yeah, I like that. I, I, we both have husbands who have a thing for koalas and just love yes. that creature. So, <laughs> so I love that idea. Um, I, <laughs> I'm just thinking about like, I would want them to name it something. Oh way. yeah, of course. Yeah, like yeah, that's a really I like that idea. That's a cute one. Yeah. Um, for the next price bracket, this is something I'm really excited about, and I actually <laughs> bought for John. I think I'm going to give it to him before he goes on his next work trip. Yeah, there you go. Uh, this is a convertible garment bag. So oh, the okay. fold it in half single purpose garment bag is a thing of the past, right? It is a piece of luggage that only does one thing. Yeah. So this is a garment bag that zips into a duffel. Oh, well, that's smart. So you, okay. So when you lay it flat, you put your suit or your gown in the bag. Yeah. You zip it up and then it zips around the sides to kind of roll and you can put more things inside the roll. Well, that's smart. And it comes over your shoulder like a duffel bag. I love that idea. If you're someone who has to travel with suits like or something fancy, that's a really good idea. Definitely for like a work trip sort of situation. I love that idea. Yeah. Okay, so I went a little different. I kind of did go tech a little bit because I felt like I had to. Um, I thought about, I have a a husband who likes to exercise quite a bit and both of us have messed up like shoulders or backs or both. Um, So um, my idea was a TheraBody Theragun, but like a mini one that they can just kind of travel with. Oh my gosh. I have a Theragun and I Love it. Yeah, I love, I love mine. Love it. Yeah. This one goes in like a work bag or your gym bag, or if you need to travel with it, you can do that. So it's a smaller one, um, which is, you know, those are just always helpful. And it's still powerful. The one that I have is still a powerful one. So I like that. Um, I also thought about on the splurge end, um, some wireless, wireless noise canceling headphones. If you, <laughs> these have a really good battery life, um, if you're someone, especially like sensory overload is a problem, like these are really, really good. They're from Sony. 
if somebody maybe falls asleep with them on or they forget to charge them, the battery life is such that, you know, it's like 10 hours that you can get out of these headphones. So That's amazing. Yeah. So these are pretty awesome. Um, and they're, you know, wireless. They're going to connect to everything and all that should be pretty easy. So that's partner I love stuff. That. Yeah. Okay. And then um, your bestie, I saved this the best for last, right? These are hard because it just depends on, you have to know your person, right? So these are kind of general things. I, of course, was thinking about a few of my girls who I thought might really love this sort of stuff. So um, the first one that I had under the under 20 bucks was some really cute hair clips. Just like, right, right, right. you know, your friends and like, I could totally see Jenny rocking a few like big acrylic or pearl hair clips. Oh, I'm in. Yeah. I can, t- and like, especially if they are big enough to like hide how dirty my hair is, <laughs> then yeah, I'm or, all about um, these. That I'm definitely overdue for my roots. I'm like trying to tease my hair so that you can't see it. But yeah, I mean, so anything that kind of draws your eye away from uh, the... Or like you have bangs. Like there are days when you just need those to be out of your face. Absolutely. Like some, some super cute clips would be really good for that. I know we talked, we made fun of the leather thing a little bit ago with your partner because it's always like, this This is a great gift for dudes, but sometimes they are, okay? And um, oh, yeah. I found a super cute leather um, pouch. It's a zipper pouch uh, by Mark and Graham. And it comes in like two sizes, I think. Yeah, two. Um, a small pouch that can hold cards and cash, kind of like a wallet, but then a bigger one that can hold your smartphone and some makeup along with your other stuff. Um I liked this one because you can monogram it, which um, if you know Jenny you at know all. You know I love a good monogram. Right. You have to get a good monogram going for Jenny. Uh, you can get two to three initials on it in all these different styles. You can get cursive and script with shadow and like sports themed ones, um, tons of different colors. So that's a great one. On the higher, a little bit higher end, um, I thought a mini photo printer for your smartphone. Because sometimes like. How fun. Right. Like. All of us have those pictures on our phone that are like, you know, a screenshot of this or like, I need you to see my, my fingernails. (laughs) Like we have those, but nobody (laughs) needs those, right? Like sometimes you just want the really cute one and you just want to print it out and have a little tiny sweet picture of you and your friends. So, um, a cute little one that connects, uh, via Bluetooth it's by Canon. Um, it's the Canon Ivy mini photo printer for smartphones and it's, it's really small and you can kind of carry it around too, if you need to, right? So like, that's a cute idea. If you are looking to spend a little bit more on your friend, I suggest custom stationery. And this could be something that you buy from an Etsy seller, or you can go to a stationery store. There are lots of different ways to buy (laughs) stationery, but this is the kind of gift much like a quality knife. Mm. This is something that people are not buying for themselves any longer. It's true. Or, or most of the time we're not. Yeah. Um, but uh, it's something that would definitely come in handy and would be used. And every time your friend is writing a letter or reaching out to someone or saying thank you, they're also thinking of you. I suggest that you choose a flat card with matching envelopes or look at an ensemble that includes flat cards, envelopes, and notepad. Totally agree. Love that idea. Okay. All right. Now, are you ready to spend way too much money with your friend? (laughs) Buy each other tickets to something. Talk about it. Decide what the event is and say, I'll buy yours and you buy mine. You get to have an experience together, you make a memory, and you can tell your spouse, oh, well, you know, Caitlin bought the ticket for this, so I have to go. Right. You don't need to tell them that you paid for hers, so. (laughs) (laughs) If these are people in your life that you know love to go and do things, the experience together is probably the best option. Then it becomes like, what do these people really love to do? You know what I mean? That's really the way to to think of that. Um, I personally love myself I love to open things like I just (laughs) it just makes me happy to open something so even if you were to put in a box that that says like we are going to absolutely to to the zoo then I get to open it and be like oh yeah we're going to the zoo yeah exactly you know that's yeah I love to do that kind of thing and I love if I were to give an experience I would do the same for someone else because I love to have someone open things from me 
right? So yes. I don't need to watch you open it because that makes everyone uncomfortable. <laughs> but I do <laughs> love to give a physical thing that I can put in your hand. Yes. And that is typically what we do as well. Um, also, my parents for a long time were giving each other a vacation at Christmas time. And so they've talked about it, they've planned it, but they would still like make up a card put it in an envelope under the tree and then open it in front of us like, oh my goodness, we're going to New York City. I had no idea. And it's like, no, no, you booked it. Like we know right. you know. <laughs> right, right. I am also going to say that some of these things would be really good as stocking stuffers. For stocking stuffers, I'm thinking about specifically for kids. We, we didn't really mention that here, but I do want to point out that like things that are consumables, that you know are going to get used up a lot are really good as stocking stuffers. For example, bath bombs, those get used, give those as stocking stuffers. They also have shower bombs that you can use, highly recommend those. Um, if you wanna give gift cards, put those in stockings. If you know that there's a child in your life who loves to color, give them colored pencils, but put them in the stocking. Don't make them be the gift, mm. like just put them in the stocking. Consumables are good to put there. Like fun band-aids because you know your child needs to have a lot of band-aids and nothing will make it better until Pokemon is on the knee. Do that, right? Right. I agree. Okay. Those are always the All right. Well, today. as you are shopping mm -hmm. on your phone, mm -hmm. don't forget to pop on over and uh, subscribe, rate, review, like us, tell your friends, and um, make good choices. Yeah. Um, if you see sales, please just do that. Um, and just know that in addition to telling us about sales, you're going to go onto our website and you're going to find all of these items that we've listed and more ideas. And then you're going to tell us that you found it with, with our help and you're going to tag us in those posts. And uh, have a great Thanksgiving and a happy and safe holiday season. That's the end. That's all I got. Yeah. All Pass right. the gravy. Yeah, do it. Bye. Hey friends, thanks for listening to the CK and GK podcast. Find us at CK and GK podcast on Instagram and Twitter and rate, review, and subscribe on Apple podcasts, Spotify, good pods, or anywhere else that you pod. See you next time.